Hi, Music 203 class. In this third video over augmented sixth chords, I'm going to cover some Roman numeral analysis and how composers use the augmented sixth chords in their music. So we're going to look at some actual um, music, some literature, some uh, piano music, and also some orchestral music. And I'm going to show you how composers uh, use the augmented sixth chord during the common practice period. If you go to week 11, uh, in the module for week 11 in Canvas, you're going to see a page in there called Augmented 6 Video 3 Recordings. And you'll be able to hear and re-listen to all the recordings for the um, five different pieces that I'm going to go through here today. Well, the first one, Mozart's Piano Sonata in D Major. K284, the first movement measures 11 through 18. And let's take a listen to the recording here. Okay, let's take a listen to it one more time. And if you would like to, you can go ahead and pause the video and look at some of the chords on your own and uh, see if you can figure out some of the harmonies in this excerpt. And then uh, come back to the video when you're finished and we'll take a look at the uh, chords in it. Okay, so here's a little bit closer look at this piece. Uh, the key is D major. And you can see the first measure we have the one chord. D, F sharp, here's the A, probably some passing tones here. Now in the next measure, um, it looks like the chord is G, B, D, primarily, at least um, from here to here. Uh, G, B, D with the, with the D in the bass. So that's 4, 6, 4. Now notice that is a pedal 6, 4, right? Look at the bass on the 6, 4 chord before and after, same tone. So you want to put the pedal 6, 4 in parentheses. Here's D, F sharp, A, so as expected, he's just um, ornamenting or decorating or prolonging here the one chord area. All right, the next measure, we have the notes G, E, D, Ds, B, G. Um, it looks like the chord is E, G, B, D, with the G in the bass, right? There's some arpeggiation here, but... You're probably going to hear the G is the bass, the functioning bass for the whole measure. That chord is 2, and with the G in the bass, 6, 5. So it's a, a pretty dominant chord, 7th chord on 2. Okay, the next measure, uh, we have the notes A, D, F sharp, D, C natural. Now notice the C natural is outside the key. And then A. So if we're going to be consistent with uh, the, the idea for the last measure where you know, all these notes and the right hand part were all a part of the same chord, I think we should be consistent in this measure and do the same thing. So stack these in thirds, you come up with D, F sharp, A, and C natural. Now notice, as we suggested, the C natural is outside the key. This makes a secondary dominant, right? You see it's a major major triad with a minor seventh, major minor seventh chord. So D is the dominant to the key of G. And in the key of D, of course, this is number four. I'm going to count the A as the base. So that's four, three position. And you might remember whenever you have a secondary, whenever you have a dominant seventh chord built on the, the first scale degree, it's a dominant of four. Now, of course, we do expect the next chord to be four. Let's take a look and see if it is. B, G, D, G, D. Yep, it is G, B, D. So it's four, and you can see the B is the base. So four, six. Okay, next measure, uh, we definitely have some chromatic notes. Here's a B flat, 
F natural, G sharp, and D. Now, if you're going to stack those all in thirds, you'd have G sharp, B flat, D, F natural. Right away, you should notice the distance from G sharp to B flat. Do you see how that's a diminished third interval? And remember, as soon as you find a diminished third, you know you have not found a triad or a seventh chord. It must be one of the augmented sixth chords. So think about it not as root third, fifth, seventh. Think about it as more of a stack of notes. Uh, well, G sharp is, and B flat rather. So B flat and G sharp form the augmented six in that chord, right? And then you can also see that we have scale degree one, which is the D, but we also have the F natural. Now in the key of D major, that's the lowered third. So this is a German chord, right? Here's the augmented sixth interval, B flat to G sharp. Here's scale degree one, and there's the lowered third scale degree. So this is a German augmented six. Now, uh, theorists do not typically put inversion symbols on augmented sixth chords, but notice that the B flat is the bass note, which is expected, right? Here's the augmented sixth chord. Remember the expected bass note for augmented sixth chords is a major third below the tonic, and we're in D, so the B flat is the normal bass note there. You might also notice that um, the B flat in the bass part, this is a B flat here still, um, is going down by step to scale degree five, and the G sharp is going up by step to scale degree five. And of course, the chord that ends this excerpt is five, and <clears throat> this is a predominant chord, as we expect. You might remember saying that the German chord should really go to one six four before it gets to five, unless something has happened to, you know, get rid of that that parallel. Let's see if we can find the parallel and see if he was able to mask it or get rid of it. Remember that the parallel fifth could occur between the B flat and the F natural. Well, notice that Mozart puts the F natural here, but then gets rid of it. And so he no longer has the F natural and the, the parallel fifth problem is gone. So he basically just gets rid of the fifth above the base of the German chord. All right, so here's the entire analysis of this excerpt. And I just want to play the chords for you and then I'll play the recording one more time. So here's D major. So from the beginning, you hear the one chord, and then uh, four, six, four, back to one. And then the E minor seven, and then the D seven, which time the size is four. Here's the German chord, which then eventually goes to five. Okay, and here's the recording, the commercial recording, one more time for you. The next excerpt we're going to look at is Mozart's Symphony Number no. 40, K550, the first movement. And the little excerpt is near the beginning of the first movement, measures 9 through 16. And again, let's begin by listening to the recording a couple times. Just one more time, it goes by pretty quickly. take a look at the analysis of this one. Uh, G minor is the key. And you can see we have the, the one chord to begin, G, B flat, and D. Okay, the whole measure is one here. And then we have the notes C, A, E flat, and F sharp. So in root position, it would be F sharp, A, C, and E flat. Well, in the key of G minor, that is the leading tone chord. Uh, with the C in the bass, 4-3 position. 
The next chord, B flat, G, D. So it's the G minor chord, but now in first inversion. Okay, the next measure is actually very similar to this measure here. In fact, I think it's the same. Yes, it is. So you can see these measures are the same. Okay, and then back to the minor one and first inversion, this measure and this measure have the same chord. So you hear the, the same chord progression twice here and here. This next chord is, is a little bit perhaps unexpected to what we've seen, but uh, it's E, G, B flat, and D. E natural, G, B flat, and D. Um, I think you're going to hear these notes as passing. And the root is E natural. Now, in the key of G minor, scale degree 6 is E flat. But the E natural is the sharp 6. So this is a chord that's not found too often. Actually, a very nice example of one. But it's the chord built on the sharp sixth scale degree that forms a diminished, a half diminished seventh chord, right? Here's a diminished triad. And then from the E to the D is a minor seven. So this is um, notated with Roman numerals as sharp six, half diminished seven, because this scale degree is raised, the root of the chord is raised in relationship to the key signature. So sharp six, half diminished seven. Um, the next chord is E flat, G, C sharp, and B flat. And let's see if we can stack those in thirds. So if you were to stack them in thirds, you would go C sharp, E flat, G, and B flat. Again, notice the diminished third interval between the C sharp and the E flat. So right away you know that's going to be an augmented sixth chord. Let's see which type it is. Well, the E flat's the bass. And then the C sharp is above it. Scale degree one is G. And then the B flat is scale degree three in the key of G minor, right? So you can see that this is a German chord. Now, again, we expect the German chord to go to 164 to avoid parallel fifths. Uh, but again, Mozart is, finds very creative ways to get around that problem. Uh, notice that these these notes are outside the key. And you can see that the B flat, which is the fifth from the bass, where the potential parallel fifth is, again, he just he just makes it disappear. So he doesn't write the B flat near this chord, which of course is the five. So that's how he's able to do that without writing the parallel fifths in an obvious way. Um, the other thing is notice there's no A in the top. So if he were to take this B flat to the A in the top of this chord, you might actually hear it as a parallel fifth, but it's really not there. So he finds creative ways to get around it. Okay, so here's the here's the whole thing. All right, and again, I'd like to play the chords for you. And in G minor, here's the first chord, G minor one. And then he goes to seven, fully diminished, four, three. Six back to the seven fully diminished four three back to one six and then here's that uh, sharp six half diminished seven chord and here's the German chord which then resolves to five. Here. Here's uh, one more uh, recording of the orchestra playing the same excerpt. Next excerpt we're going to look at is Beethoven's Bagatelle, Opus 119, number one, the, the opening 16 measures. Uh, again, here's a recording of that.
All right, rather than look at the whole excerpt, I just wanted to show you little parts of it, and of course, point out to you where the augmented sixth chords are. Uh, the key is G minor. And of course, it does start with a G minor chord. You might find it curious that there is no G in the chord, but um, the G comes later, and your ear kind of fills in the gaps, especially once you get past this point right here. You hear that you're in G minor, and you know this is really functioning like one. This chord as well, even though there's no F sharp, chances are you're going to hear it as D, F sharp, A, and C. You can see that kind of passing motion in the bass filled in with the 5, 4, 3. Uh, 5, D, F sharp, A, 5, 6. And then back to 1 here. Uh, this is the augmented 6th chord. Let's take a look at it. This is an E flat. So if you were to stack it up in thirds, you would say C sharp, E flat, and G. And again, notice right away, there's that diminished third interval. So think about it rather as the augmented sixth interval with scale degree one in between it. Now there are only three notes, and of course, that's the Italian chord. Remember that the Italian chord goes to five typically, and that's what it's doing here. All right, I'd also like to take a look at measure seven and eight in the bagatelle here. Uh, notice measure seven, we have the notes C and E flat and A, A, C, and E flat. That's two in the key of G minor. Then here we have what looks like A7. A, C sharp, E is missing, and G. Now, of course, that's a secondary dominant, right? A7. A is a dominant to the key of D, which in the key of G is number 5. So this is going to sound and look just like 5, 6, 5, a 5. It's missing the E, and then 5. And what it's doing, of course, is leading to this half cadence here in a very strong way. It gives a little bit more weight to this half cadence in measure 8. It's also interesting to notice that a lot of the notes in the 2 and also in this chord, and of course these are both predominant type chords, also are found in the, in the augmented 6th chords. E flat, C sharp, and G. Well, here's the E flat. G could have been a part of this chord as well, by the way. That would be the seventh of this chord. And then here's the C sharp. Now, in the G again. Now, notice if, if this note, if uh, this chord had an E flat in it, especially in the bass, it would actually be the French augmented sixth chord. So, uh, 565 of 5. Um, actually, more specifically, 5, 4, 3 of 5, because it had the E in the bass, right? And uh, the French chord, which would have the E flat in the bass, right? E flat up to C sharp in the scale degree 1 and the scale degree 2, these chords are very similar. So all you have to do is um, change a 5, 4, 3 of 5, make it into a French chord by simply flatting the bass note. So here the E would become an E flat. All right, and here's measure 11. And you can see it's the, it's the same chord progression that we had earlier in, what, the third measure. And here again is the Italian chord. So he writes the same music again. E flat to C sharp, C augmented 6, and there's the G. And again, in measure 12, goes to 5. Let's take a listen to this recording one more time. Um, see if you can hear the Italian augmented sixth chords and how they go to five. The next excerpt we're going to look at is from your textbook, and it's actually on page 383 of your textbook. It's this Clara Schumann Polonaise, a little excerpt from the beginning of it. And again, let's take a listen to a recording, first of all.
let's look at some of the chords in this example. Uh, the excerpt's in A minor. And it starts with a curious chord. It doesn't start with one. It actually starts with a chromatic chord. The notes are F sharp, A, C, and D sharp. Stack in thirds, D sharp, F sharp, A, and C. Well, that's a fully diminished seventh chord, right? It's a fully diminished seventh chord that tonicizes E, which in this key is number five. And what, six five position? So, leading tone chord of five. Now notice all the composer does is drops the F sharp to the F natural in the next chord. Everything else is the same. At least uh, the first part of it. But now look at what happens. D sharp to F natural, that is no longer a seventh chord. This is a diminished third interval. So again, you know that you found an augmented sixth chord. Look at it as a, as a vertical sonority, an up and down. F in the bass, augmented sixth above it is D sharp. Scale degree one is A in the key of A. And then the C is also present, which is scale degree three. So this is a German chord. Now, we expect the German chord to go to 164 to avoid the parallel fifths, and let's see if she did that in her music. The next chord, E, E, A, C, E, yeah, it is 164. Notice how the D sharp resolves up to the E, and the F natural goes down to the E. You might actually hear the resolution a little more clearly to that E, but it's an octave displaced. But you are hearing the augmented sixth expand to an octave as expected. Now there's some other chords in here as well. You might uh, you might hear an F chord here, which would be six, or you could, might be able to hear it as more of a non-chord tone kind of thing happening. It's a little little fleeting, but it comes right back to the one six four, and then uh, D sharp, F sharp, A, and C again. So it's that same chord that we had before, right? This time with a D sharp in the bass, and then go goes back to one six four. We're looking for five, right? That's really the goal. And here we're, we're hearing um, perhaps B diminished, which is like a two. You see it? B, D, F is missing A. Something like that. And then here's five. Now the C, um, you could count it as a chord tone if you wanted to. It, it really forms kind of like a 13th sound to it, or a 6th above the bass. Or you could call it, remember that uh, approach by a step and left by a leap is called an escape tone. But there's a 5, and then to 1. Let's take a listen to that a couple more times. Uh, again, listen for the German chord and how it precedes 164, which eventually finds its way to 5. And really what she's doing here is introducing the sound of the key of A minor with this little introduction. And by the time you get there, you know you're in A minor. This last example by Grieg, the lyric piece, Opus 47, number 3, uh, measures 37 through 42. And when you listen to the recording uh, through Canvas, go ahead and go to about 58 seconds into the recording. That's where you'll find this excerpt. This last uh, excerpt that we're going to look at features an augmented sixth chord that is of a scale degree besides scale degree 5 in the key. Now, the key is A minor. And let's take a listen to the excerpt. One more time. 
time. Now in this example, the augmented sixth chord is actually found in this measure right here. And you'll see that um, if you try to stack it up in thirds, you might go with E, G sharp, B flat, and D, right? That's all a third apart from one another. Notice between the G sharp and the B flat is a diminished third interval. So let's think about it as an augmented sixth chord. The B flat to the G sharp is the interval of an augmented six. And inside of that, we can see D and E. Now notice, this is actually a French augmented six chord, but it's in the key of D. Because remember, they always contain scale degree one. So it actually is not the expected one in the key of A minor, because notice what happens is the G sharp and the B flat expand outwards to that octave, to A's, but A is scale degree one. So, and this is the one chord here. So you can see what uh, the composer is actually doing is uh, drawing more attention to the A chord, to the A minor chord one chord, through an augmented sixth chord that belongs really in a different key. So he's not going to five with it, he's going to one with it instead. So this is a, another way that augmented sixth chords are sometimes used. Um, it is not as common as the way that we've been talking about it so far. So you can really expect most of the augmented sixth chords that you'll find to go to one, six, four, or to five, to get to five eventually. But there, there are plenty of examples out there, um, especially by composers a little bit later in the Romantic period or even into the early 20th century that use these augmented sixth chords in uh, slightly different ways. So you can see that it is a French augmented six. It just doesn't belong in the key of A minor as expected. It really belongs to, to D minor. And it, uh, um, you can see the G sharp, you know, is really going up to the A and the, and the B flat down to the A here. So you can hear it is resolving to an A minor chord. Now the book does have a way of explaining how to analyze that, but uh, we're not going to cover that in Music 203 this semester. So um, it's sufficient for, to, for now just to put it's French and we, we do understand of course it's not the, the one we expect in the key of A minor. Let's take a listen to the recording again. Uh, see if you can hear that augmented sixth chord on the B flat here and how it leads to the A minor chord which is tonic in this key. And really, you know, another comment you can make is that uh, here we hear the dominant chord, the dominant seventh, E, G sharp, B, and D. And notice, really, all he does in the next measure is just just drops the B to the B flat. So he tur turns the dominant chord, which is E seven, into this French chord, which unexpectedly. Um, well, it's not unexpected that it uh, exists there, but it unexpectedly does not belong as the one you expect in A minor. Now, the chord that you would expect in A minor, if you went through the process of spelling it, uh, scale degree 5 is E, right? And if you surround E by half steps, you would have D sharp and F natural. So... F and D sharp would be the augmented six, scale degree one would be A, and scale degree three would be C. So that would be the one that you would expect in the A minor key, and you would expect the F and the D, uh, D sharp to go to the scale degree five on the five chord of the one, six, four. So you can see how this chord is really spelled in the key of D, and it uh, functions to decorate or resolve to, in a certain way, the one chord instead of five. So, interesting example.